accordance to them. But when they say that Jesus was not the Son of God, Jesus has never, never been on the cross, uh, God never came in the flesh, these are, uh, to us, utter blasphemy. The, who is anti, he is Antichrist who denies the Father and the Son. They're making utter blasphemies, which doesn't insult us. Uh, why does it insult them and it's not supposed to insult us? Mm -hmm. Well, it's because God gave us love. And this is the first thing I learned as a Christian, is that we have love, long-suffering, tolerance, these things. We, you know, we put up with it. Mm -hmm. Well, Khalid is a former terrorist converted to love people. When Dave was talking about what goes on in these mosques and over in this country, sometimes I get cold chills thinking about have they got, is terrorism changed when it comes into this country as a Muslim to go into a mosque? You mean, have we... Uh, have you converted and you decide you're going to love us as Christians, <laughs> us Sunday people, and not blow our heads off? I'm still the lost. People who, the people who have come and go to the mosque, who built the mosque yes. and, and go to the mosque. Have they changed? Me? Have they changed? Do, are they friendly Muslims? <laughs> well, uh, I, I like to use an example. Uh, Ibrahim Abdullah, a colleague who became a Christian. He was a terrorist just like myself. He speaks now. He, he works with us at the Shubat Foundation. Uh, he got on Fox News and he started speaking out against terrorism. He's a guy speaking purely to fight terrorism, that suicide bombing is wrong. He gets 400 phone calls, okay? He lives in, uh, 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 he lives in a Muslim community, Arab community, 400 phone calls. He says, every single person that I've known in my community either threatened me or cursed me or reprimanded me severely. He said, I haven't had one single phone call that says, you know what? I support what you're doing. Not one from the entire Muslim, uh, Arab Muslim wow. community. What does that tell you? That tells you that nothing has changed. Nothing's changed. Statistics makes, to me, statistics is the best way to find out. Mm -hmm. But you can't get that statistic by going to the uh, Arab Muslim community and saying, hey, we'd like to make a statistics. Do you still love us? Yeah. Oh, of course. <laughs> the only way to make such statistics is to have people like Ibrahim Abdullah come and testify what happens to people when they change mm -hmm. their faith. Mm -hmm. Well, that's on the head news headlines today was that um, they're asking the president of um, Afghanistan to do away with this uh, man, this Christian's yes. sentence for death. Yes. Do you think they will? Well, I hope if you have enough political pressure and clout uh, that, that they will, but uh, I'm not so hopeful. See, here's what, here's what the West is saying, British, Americans, and so forth. We have our boys over there dying to try to bring you freedom. And you are going to kill a man because he became a Christian. Mm -hmm. You are denying everything that we thought we were coming in. And our boys have died mm -hmm. to give you a freedom. And then we find that after all we've been through, it's still the same, and Islam is still going to run roughshod over the rights of everybody? Mm -hmm. That's that's very um, disillusioning, to say the least. Amen. Yes, it is. Okay, questions. The one about how do I know if I'm in a church that teaches replacement theology, how would you choose? Are you for a one-state or two-state solution when it comes to Israel? If they say they are for a two-state solution, don't walk into that church. That means giving, creating a Palestinian state. If they are for a one-state solution, ask them what state. Which state? <laughs> yes. Uh -huh. That's right. the bottom line. That, that's, that's very good. The, the that's test as far as I'm concerned. Well, you could simply ask the pastor. Do you believe Israel has been replaced by the church? Mm -hmm. uh, he may not teach it every Sunday, but you could ask that question. Mm -hmm. And then ask him, uh, what about this verse? <laughs> what about this verse? Uh, and then they will say, well, that doesn't mean Israel anymore. They will have to spiritualize it and, and so forth. Yeah. Here's an interesting statement. I think this lady was on one of the tours. When we were in Bethlehem at the church in Nativity, it was horrible. I felt terrible. Is this a picture of revisionist theology by the Palestinians for the sake of 
tourism dollars? Uh, absolutely. Uh, it's amazing that she didn't go to Bethlehem, to the Nativity Church, uh, when the Muslims were trying to take over, and they did take over it. Uh, uh, Muhammad Abayat was... Uh, uh, as a matter of fact, the Israelis missile and killed him. My cousin was injured. He was with me. He was being shown as a victim of this Israeli bombing. And I said, excuse me, he was with me in a bombing of a bank. What are you talking about? He's an ambulance driver. <laughs> uh, they took it over. You know, if you want to see it then, that's what Americans should see. The Nativity Church is when it was taken over, defecated in it, mm -hmm. yeah. took all the objects that the, these, these priests had, stole all the gold, uh, littered and looted the place, literally. And they go there, as a matter of fact, now. You can go there in the Friday prayer in the manger square. They go and pray in front of the manger square. Why? Because this soon is going to become a mosque. Mm -hmm. The birthplace of Jesus is going to become a mosque. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What's going to happen to the Christians that are in Bethlehem? Are there Christians who love Israel yes. in Bethlehem? There are very few. You can count them on your fingers. I mean, okay. they're so, so, those are the most persecuted. Uh -huh. uh, they're called the, the born-again Christians. Mm -hmm. And as a matter of fact, when I, last time I remember when I visited, they said, don't talk to him. He's one of those born-again Christians. They are hated by the Christians the most, as a matter of fact. Oh, really? Yes, by the, quote, Christians. Uh -huh. They are the most rejected. Uh, really? But those are very, very few in number, you know. And there is a, a, it's all underground, you know. It's a, it's a very mm -hmm. secretive kind of thing because you, know, you get really persecuted. Nobody speaks for these people. You have Bethlehem Bible College there, Bishar Awad. Uh, he runs Bethlehem Bible College. Uh, he's a pro two state solution, of course, creating a state of Palestine. And he hates Israel vehemently. And he wants Israel's destruction. All these groups, all these Christian groups that Americans are supporting, uh, we am uh, Bethlehem Bible College, uh, Emil Salaita. Uh, I can give you all the names. Uh, this, they're, they're funneling money to these people, thinking they're funneling money to believers. These are not believers. These are totally different breed of, of, of Christians. Okay. I'd like to get those names before you leave. Yes, ma'am. Dave, in your book, Peace, Prosperity, and the Coming Holocaust, you indicate very little of the world will be aware of the Holocaust being about to happen. Are we close to this Holocaust? This ties into some of the things you and I have been talking about too, Waleed. What about this? Well, I don't, uh, I wrote that book a long time ago and I don't remember the exact uh, statement here, but uh, Jesus said even to his church, at such an hour as you think not the Son of Man cometh. 